I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn 686, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Got a really loud organ, so I'm wondering if you guys would be willing to stand over on the side real quick. Come on over. They have such better voices than I do, and I want to be able to hear them. And the mic's over here, so it's okay. Thanks, guys. What? <laughs> Much appreciated. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, we are really blessed this morning to have a baptism. And so uh, I invite you to page 299 of our Book of Common Prayer. Page 299. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, 
God, whose blessed Son, Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God, and heir to eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be life in his eternal and glorious kingdom. He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. You may be seated for the reading. The first reading is from Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant. Concerned by those who live, is found by those who seek her. by his that those in my misfortune draw back and be let those who say to me aha and glow over me come back because they are all those who love yourself say forever, great is But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O oh God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O oh Lord. Do not tarry. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters. Who have no hope. Those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, with the cry of command, with the ark and with them in the air. I invite you to stand in the past
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five when the lamps took no oil with them. But the wise of oil. As the bridegroom was delivered, all of them became drowsy. At midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You to the deep and buy for yourselves. And while they were ready, Lord, reply to you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know not nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory be to you, God, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today is a pretty big day, pretty big day here at St. Good morning. It is on this rock Sunday. On this rock, of course, coming from Matthew chapter 16, where Jesus tells Peter, I call you Petros, rock. And on this rock, I shall build my church. And so on this Rock Sunday, we still out to pray over and to celebrate not just our finances and stewardship of this church, but actually all the way to support and steward the work of Christ here at St. Peter's. Except today is like doubly important and special because it's not only on this rock Sunday, but it's a Sunday where we have three baptisms. And baptism is, of course, also related to stewardship. Now, you may be like, well, I didn't know that, Father Jeremy. Please tell me more about it. Sound like a church. Um, but I just, but I think they actually are deep related is the stewardship of faith. Baptism is one of the seven holy sacraments of our church. One of the seven signs that God is doing something mystical and magical behind the scenes. And actually, even more, baptism is considered two great sacraments. Baptism and the Eucharist. These two things that Jesus was like, yo, these Christians, we believe that something truly magical and mystical is happening during these moments when we come to when we come with this faithfulness, and God uses that faithfulness and transforms it into something more. That is the nature of stewardship. It is this offering up 
this guiding, this using what belongs to gods and tries to guide its use to the further of God's kingdom. And so today, or really any day, have a baptism or a significant day in the life of the parish, you hope and that the Spirit of God does not disappoint. Because we are actually given from Matthew's Gospel this parable of the ten bridesmaids. And there is, it's like there's all of the confusing parts of the story where half the at midnight, by my oil, and I'm, and I'm reading the commentary. Why, why bridesmaids go out at midnight to, to buy oil it, and they don't press it i mean because like you read this and you're like walmart in bennington is not how is it that a first century oil salesman is going to be open at midnight it makes sense and then the group who also arrives at midnight and the like that part doesn't make sense either because if it's after the wedding and you're about to start a party, I, I want to be, Brendan and I want to be in bed by 9.30. So there's no way that we're going to a party at midnight. And so I think to myself the utter ridiculousness of this story. How utterly absurd this parable feels with the wedding feast and the bride and the groom arriving at midnight and the bridesmaids have to go out and buy, like the whole thing feels absurd. Except, except if I were preaching from this pulpit 10 years ago, and you would have told me that half of Vermont was going to flood, that our, a country that we were supposed to be allies with against the Ukraine, that peace in the Middle East was going to explode just when treaties were going to be formed, weren't even pick a speaker of the house until like who knows was absurd things happen to you and me and in our world all the friggin time and so of course Jesus parable is comical and absurd because it's in these impossible to account for moments, these times when you don't see something, because they make no sense. You need spiritual wisdom to hold on to give you I mean, if you remember years ago that the entire rush doping. Like people and countries do the same thing all of them. And so in the midst of confusion, absurdity, how do you make sense? And Jesus is God's mighty answer to all of this to be ready. Matthew uses it. Because your name is Greg. Greg Gorit. They were Greg. Greg. Means. Alertness. This was really cool. The word to be. Anytime anybody tells you, you tell them that Jesus used that term first, and it's in the Bible. But it also means to be caught and aware, careful so that some calamity or something bad does not happen. When you're in the midst of a sense of to double down your outlook and be careful go sideways. How does that on Sunday? How does that stewardship? How does that 
quite a bad thing we're about to do. It actually strikes at the core of When the Bennington electorate decides to do whatever they like to do with social justice or finance, its way of being, we here at St. Peter's, we are going to watch more closely how we do things. When the faith of those around us out in the world or confused, or afraid, or doubtful, when the world and doubt even more, Joel Sr., and Jocelyn, and Job, and all of us are going to be more mindful of our own faith, and our own faith journeys, and double down on our beliefs, and not let them be polluted by the absurdity around us. My point is that it applies because no matter what is happening beyond these walls, inside this place, in this sanctuary, in that parish office, in this parish hall, in my home, and in your home, wherever you and I are, we more careful with our faith, with our finances, with what we choose to do and say in Jesus' name, the enemy may not try, the enemy may try to break us, but he won't. We shall tell the devil that he may not pass and that we are watching out for one another. Whether you're being baptized today, offering your stewardship pledge today, offering a token with your prayers and vulnerabilities, or even if you just approach the altar for the Eucharist and offer yourself to God to receive. We are all offering what we have and what we are stewards over and giving it back to God's use. And I think God's message to us today is in the midst of all this stewardship talk, all of the offering of ourselves and our souls and our bodies, will we be alert? Will we be Gregorian? And that even though we baptized three blessed children of God this morning, this is a morning for all of us. That no matter who you are, you are to be mindful of yourself, especially in an absurd world out there. So that neither you or I are caught with no extra oil when the groom comes home. Amen. I return us to page 301. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Do you desire to be baptized? <laughs> Will you be responsible for the seeing that this child present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? 
Do you renounce the evil, the powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? This question is to this parish here present, and so I direct you all to the bottom of page 303 as I ask you this question in full faith. You who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ. Yeah. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Word and example good news of God. Seek Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor and yourself. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every single human being? Whatever posture is most prayerful for you, we are going to pray over these candidates, and so I invite you into that posture. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way. Let us persons to receive the sacrament of new birth. For those who have renewed their commitment to Christ, deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our Send them to the world and witness your love. Lord, hear our Bring them in the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage into Egypt, into the land of the promise. In it, your Son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, 
for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, enjoy yourself in this fellowship with those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. Sanctify this water, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Joel. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jocelyn, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He practiced this. Job, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jocelyn, Joel, and Job, please come up here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sins, and you have raised them to new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inspiring and discerning heart and courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Joel, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. A cross for you and a candle of Christ's light in your life. Jocelyn, you are sealed Holy Spirit and baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. A candle of Christ's light and a cross. These would Guys, I would take a photo of it on your phone because it'll be like 25 years from now and some church in the middle of nowhere will be like, do you have your baptismal certificate? And you'll be like, I have no idea where that thing is. So... <laughs> Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection 
and share with us in his eternal priesthood. This is one of the most rare moments that we get to have in church, so I invite you all with as loud as you possibly can to celebrate this momentous occasion. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be Peace you. are blessed. God sees you are beloved. God sees you are oh, you are beloved. You are beloved. You are beloved. God's peace. 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 You are beloved. As you arrived, you were given a token. In addition to what you might normally give, we invite you to place that token in the plate with a prayerful <laughs> offering of yourself to God. It could be a promise of time, of talent, of treasure. It could be a resolution. It could even be a prayer of desperation or thanksgiving, a gift of your vulnerability to God. In addition to the tokens this morning, we offer up Sherry as senior warden. will be walking forward with the stewardship promises of this parish, that it might too rest on the altar of God and be sanctified and blessed. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn for this morning is 488, Be Thou My Vision, 488. <laughs>
I invite you all to page 372, 372 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and we glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your Holy Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation anew. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring the fulfillment, the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, and he loved them to the end, at supper with them, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from these gifts that you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. For our prayers this morning, I invite you to return to the bulletin that you were given. Remember, Lord, you are one holy and Catholic apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, 
reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Let us pray for the whole church and the world. Lord, in baptism, we were joined as part of the body of Christ. Remember the Anglican Church of Mozambique and Angola in the Anglican prayer cycle. And in our Vermont prayer cycle, let us lift up in prayer the commission on missional vitality and all those discerning their ministry, ordained or lay. And remember all the dioceses of our church, including Haiti, Puerto Rico, Jerusalem, Mexico, and all other distressed communities who suffer grievously within our own Episcopal Church. Also, let us remember Archbishop Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Shannon, our priest Father Jeremy, and all who minister in your church. And let us especially offer our prayers and thanksgivings for our brothers and sister in Christ, Joel, Jocelyn, and Job. Remember, remember all, all your people who seek your truth. Remember our President Biden and all who lead and govern in this and all nations, especially those weakened by conflict and embroiled into war. May they be given the strength and courage to lead through these difficult times by the knowledge of your word and the leadership of your truth. Let us remember the people of Ukraine, Russia, Sudan, the Middle East, and all victims of war, that they find peace and refuge with the one who walks with them and leads them to the love of their neighbors. Let us also remember our veterans and military families with gratitude for their courage and sacrifice. Remember all who have the ability to choose peace over division, that there may be reconciliation among nations and among peoples of all politics, races, ethnicities, faiths, and identities. Remember, in our celebration of the aspirations and endeavors represented by the cornerstone of St. Peter's, that on this Rock Sunday, praises Jesus Christ as the eternal foundation of humanity, spirituality, and our heartfelt inspiration to give to and serve others. Let us lift up in prayer all the unique gifts which we cherish of each other here at St. Peter's. Lord, may your established order reign through the intercession and prayers of all the saints and the merits of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Remember all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially all those on our prayer chains here at St. Peter's and also at St. James. And we pray for all in our community suffering from illness, addiction, violence, loneliness, all those longing for the peace of God, and all others that we name here, either silently or aloud. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remember Mary Ellen Houlihan, Lee L. Broussard, Agnes McHusband, and Mabel Shepherd in whose names this Sunday's altar flowers were given. And remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. And let us never forget those who have lost their lives from gun violence and hate crimes. At this time, you may offer additional names, either silently or aloud. Bring them into the, into place, the place of eternal, eternal joy, joy and light. And a prayer for those in the armed forces of our country, 
Almighty God, we commend to you your gracious care and keeping of all the men and women and persons of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be through Jesus Christ our Lord. And of these offerings of stewardship, Almighty and everlasting God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Using these gifts, help us to strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, restore the penitent, grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring to us all of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in you by faith in your hearts with thanksgiving. It is the tradition of this parish that we offer communion in both bread and wine. And so we will have two chalices for the wine. If you would like to receive the bread and drink directly from the, the, the chalice, um, which Gail will hold, receive, put one arm out and you can receive the bread and then uh, Gail will have the chalice for you to drink from. If you would like me to intinct for you, then do two hands together, and I will intinct into the chalice that Vicky will hold. I have gluten-free, we have gluten-free available, and we invite everyone. You are all children of God, and so we invite everyone forward. And so if you are not to receive the Eucharist, if you are not receiving, then I invite you to cross your arms to receive a blessing. Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may you always be awake. May you always be ready. That no matter how absurd things might be out there, in your heart, you are ready with steadfast faith and love. Amen. Amen. I invite you to relax for our announcements this morning. Um, really, just a couple of announcements. The first is, even if you happen to, and I know this is none of you, but just in case, just maybe, you happen to not get your envelope in for stewardship, it's okay, it's totally okay. You are blessed in proxy. We have, we have stuff up here that's blessing your stuff in proxy, and it's still okay to turn them in. You did not miss that window. You can still turn in your stewardship pledges um to the office and so i invite you to do so we also have a 
huge festive brunch. I want to remind you that we have a festive brunch today. I saw everybody bringing in stuff. Um, and I'm really excited. And we even have something special for um, the Pasher family. So we've got, so we are really celebrating just both. We're celebrating on this rock. We're celebrating these baptisms. So I hope you haven't eaten since like yesterday because come hungry, there's lots of food. Um, and so please, please, please eat. Um, we are coming close to Advent. And so it is a reminder that with the Advent season, so too our Eucharistic prayer will change. We'll go to prayer A. Um, so just expect that rhythm that you've been in all summer is going to change up just a little bit. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, but with that means that after Christmas, after Christmas, we will be migrating again from this beautiful sanctuary into our cozy parish hall. Um, I know some of you feel like the, the parish hall is your favorite place to worship, and some of you feel like here is your, your favorite place to worship. Um, I think both have beautiful charms, but just a reminder of that. Um, any other? Sherry, am I forgetting anything? Oh, the potluck. Yep, so the potluck, thank you. The potluck is the 17th here at St. Peter's, so please, please, please come and be festive for that. It's at 5 o'clock. And then the last thing is a reminder that you are, I hope you're collecting your change in the middle of this football season. Um, we are collecting that change, um, and after the Super Bowl, we're going to give it all to the food shelf, to, to GBIX food shelf. And um, as you all know, uh, with COVID money disappearing and a lot of different things. Um, a lot of the service industry, like the social justice industry in, in Vermont loses some of the, is losing some of the money. So that money is very, very necessary and super helpful. So all of your change, keep collecting it and bring it in. Um, and if you have any questions about that, ask Stan. Our final hymn for this morning, our closing hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns, hymn number 494. Hymn number 494. <laughs>
Go in peace first to our festive brunch and then out to love and serve the world. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.